Hello Reddit. Today I'd like to go over how to make high quality GIFs. Now you can choose any type of original footage that you'd like. The thing I'd like to do is to actually get a 720p Blu-ray rip uh, MKV file of a movie and start chopping it down to just the section I want. This allows me to have a high quality source video to work with. Of course you can do this with anything. Um, when we get to the point where we're making the GIF, it won't matter where your footage came from, but if you want to start off with good footage, this is the way I do it. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is get this MKV file into a format that we can actually work with. So I'm going to use a tool called MKV Extract, and I'll go ahead and put links for all of these in the description. And what this allows me to do is to uh, basically extract out the video file from the MKV because we all know MKV is a container of the video and the audio. So I'm going to go ahead and extract out just the H.264 file from this video and let's fast forward through this. Alright, there we go. So now we've got an H.264 file which we still can't work with quite yet so I'm going to use another program called MP4 Box and what this will be able to do is it can take the H.264 file and actually uh, mux it or uh, convert it into an MP4 file which we can work with. So I'm going to go ahead and add that file from the desktop which is the H.264 and then I'm going to hit mux. Alright and we'll go ahead and fast forward that as well. Alright there we go. Now we have our MP4 file which we'll be able to work with in some video editing software that way we can basically trim down to just the section that we want to make our GIF clip from. Okay let's go ahead and take that MP4 file that we created and trim it down to just the section that we want to utilize. To do this I actually use Sony Vegas Pro. Um, you can use any type of video editing software anything that you're comfortable with in order to basically trim this down to just the section that we want to work with. Um, in this case we're doing the Morgan Freeman uh, scene from Sawshank Redemption where he's at the parole hearing and saying I don't give a shit. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and grab a sections clip. I'm going to cut out that section and the end section and now I have just the small bit of footage left, Let's put it at the beginning, zoom in here and start doing some fine tuning. Let's see what we got. Okay there it is. So let's go ahead and trim it down a little bit more. Trim the end. Sometimes you have to select the clip you want and hit Control T, which does a trim. Uh, I'm not sure why, but sometimes it doesn't work right. All right, I think that's good enough. Alright, let's go ahead and go with that footage. So I'm going to render this out. Um, now I do already have my settings preset, but for Vegas Pro I like to render out as a uh, Sony AVC and I'm going to be doing an MP4 file. Um, the settings I'm using are basically to render out at 1280 by 720 um, I believe all of this is just standard uh, 25 frame rate, uh, pixel aspect ratio 1, bit rate um, 8 million BPS. So I'm just using the Internet's 1280-720p, uh, 30p. So let's go ahead and render that out. Okay, we don't need this anymore. So now we've got our MP4 render. So at this point, we'll have a small video clip of just the section we want. So what we have to do now is basically get this from MP4 format into a series of images so that we can create our GIF. 
Um, for doing this, I actually use uh, Adobe After Effects. Uh, once again, you can use any program that you're familiar with that's able to do a series of image outputs. Um, Photoshop, I'm not sure if they can handle video files or not. I know they can do outputs of video or a, a image series, but whatever program you have that does this, it'll end up being the same thing. Um, in this case, we're using After Effects. So I'm going to bring down my render, and here's our footage. Okay, and just to duplicate what we've seen in the past, let's go ahead and just throw some text in here, and throw a little glow so you can read it better. All right, so pretty close to what we've seen out there that's been done before. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and take this file and let's throw it down here into the render queue. Um, we can keep all the settings the same because we don't want to change the length, the frame rate, or any of that. But what we do want to do is click on the output module and the format. In this case, I use PNG sequence. Um, PNG is a good quality and highly uh, compressible image type. So I'm going to go ahead and select PNG sequence. Now, the two factors of creating a good GIF that is actually usable, i.e. the size is, is relatively small, is based upon the length of the GIF, uh, GIF as well as the uh, size, um, because that's going to control how much data is going to be on the screen at once. So we're definitely not going to be able to render out a 1280 by 720p video for images, so I'm going to go ahead and resize this down. Now since I haven't trimmed this perfectly like I did the first time, the first image was only about a second or so long. This one's roughly two seconds, which makes a big difference because it's that much more data. So just in the interest of time, I'm going to bring this down to 46%. Uh, this is fine, 600 by 338. I believe the original one is closer to eight or 900 or so. The shorter you can make a GIF, the better, because um, you're going to be using up less data for the image uh, files. So. That's something you want to be aware of that if you want to make a good GIF, you really got to spend some time to lower it as much as you can. Now, this GIF is particularly nice to use, I'm um, sorry, this video file, because you can see that the background is not changing at all. All of this is just static. So, when I go to make a GIF out of this, this is not image data that's going to have to be um, rendered in as part of the GIF. It'll basically just use these same pixels the whole time. The only his section of his face is moving. So this is a great example to make a, a really high quality GIF that um, will have low file sizes because the amount of data is, is just not there. So it's a, it's a great example. Now just understand though that you're not going to necessarily get this type of compression with most GIF files um, unless you can find footage where you've got a good static background and a little bit of movement from your uh, center object. So I hit the output to to render and I'm going to do it into my frames folder I have set up here and the naming is fine so we'll just go ahead and render out that as the series of PNGs okay there we are now when I go to my frames folder we can see we've got 51 frames here roughly 10 megabytes worth of files right now like I said if you can trim this down the, the length of it and also the size of your, your output rendering um, you're going to be able to adjust the size that you, you start with. The smallest you can get it down to is the better because then we'll have a uh, smaller compression that we're going to be able to do. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is turn this into a GIF. Okay, so now we've got our series of images um, in P, uh, PNG format and now we basically have to bring them all together into a GIF. Now this is definitely something that you can do in Photoshop or any other tool out there. Um, it was brought to my attention by Pace for Porn user that there's some great free tools to do some GIF compression, which I gotta say are very impressive. Um, I tried to recreate some of the stuff that he had did in Photoshop and I just could not get the compression to work right. When I used the tools that he had uh, specified, I was getting much better results. So. I definitely recommend utilizing these tools to get your best compression you can. Um, and the good news is actually both of the tools are free. 
I'll put links to them as well, but it's uh, Image Magic and um, Gifsicle. So these tools basically allow you to compress down the file and then they change out some of the color palettes and stuff. And you get some really good compression from them. So what I've done is I actually have this make GIF batch file here. And he's going to call the two files a series of times. And basically I'm going to end up with like a dozen or, or 15 or so GIFs. And this allows me to choose the one that has the appropriate size for what I'm trying to do. So the first set of calls here is what image magic is uh, is when it's being called, and this is where gifsicle is being called. Now you can see I've got the uh, location of where I'm doing this is up a few levels or down a few levels, so um, it might be misleading looking at this text. Just realize that I have it kind of embedded in here uh, where I'm actually calling the X's. You can see I have gifsicle here, um, and I have image magic somewhere else I'm not sure where but uh, that's why you see the, this layout here so if you have any questions about any of this I, I can answer those in the comments so uh, standard command here is this is one call to image magic uh, convert plus repage minus fuzz now this right here is basically where we're doing our compression um, and for a Windows system you have to have two parentheses here <laughs> don't forget that this is the amount of compression that we want to do. So you can see I've got 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. Uh, so this is how I'm able to do a couple of compression ratios and get a few outputs because some GIFs need some heavy compression for their size. Some you can get away with less compression. And instead of doing one at a time, I find it easier just to knock them all out at once. So this is one number that will be important to the amount of compression. The other important number is going to be this delay minus or delay four, and I believe this is milliseconds or some other unit. But this is the amount of time the program is going to space each frame by. So if I change this from four to eight, that's going to make our GIF very slow because it's going to double the amount of spacing between the frames. So when you do an output for your GIF, you might notice that it's too fast or it's too slow, and you'll want to adjust this delay number. Um, I'm pretty sure that anytime you do it from a movie, uh, the, the way we did it with this uh, MKV, a 4 is the right amount. A lot of times if you were to download a GIF off the internet and you're trying to modify it and recompress it, um, 6 to 8 I believe is the delay you want because for some reason a lot of GIFs out there are, are slower than movie format. So these are the two numbers that you're really concerned with. Um, I've got, obviously this is an endless loop. Uh, the frames folder is what this is referencing. The way I have it laid out is I've got uh, this frames folder, which is in the same folder as my gifsicle. Um, that's that way; it's all uh, relative to the pathing. And then these are the two commands that do the compression. You got the optimize plus, optimize transparency, and then we have our output. And I've just named them uh, zero, zero five. You know the same numbers that we're using for compression. So when this runs, it'll go ahead and output all of our uh, GIFs from Image Magic. Then the second phase is to run Gifsicle, which uh, <laughs> not completely sure, but adjust the color palette, and you can actually get some additional compression when it does this. And so I actually use the 256 color and the 128 color palette uh, to see how well the output is. In some cases, you can get away with a 128-bit color palette but in most cases it's going to be 256. But like I said, instead of having to do this one by one, I can just do them all at once and I can get the quickest way to get this done. So a standard call for Gifsicle is to call this with a whatever that is, <laughs> 0303. I'll put all these commands in the description as well. Um, and then here's our color palette amount. We've got the source GIF and then we've got the output GIF. Okay, so when we go ahead and run the make GIF batch, it's going to put them into my output folder. And it, the longer or larger these files are, the longer this process will take. Um, it shouldn't take any more from two to five minutes if you've got a large file. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Okay, so there we have all of our GIFs. 
got them ordered by size and you can see that basically with no compression um, it starts at 6 megs and down to our largest amount of compression 389k so definitely a huge difference here in the file sizes once we start dealing with compression which is the best part about this is we get some amazing numbers so I'm gonna go ahead and test a few of these um, so uh, I like using Imager. I'm sure everyone from Reddit uses Imager. The minimum or maximum size of an upload for a GIF file is two megabytes. Um, in most cases, I try to get my GIFs under two megabytes. If it's something that's a bit longer, or I just don't want to have a lot of compression because I want to look nice, then I generally adjust for about five megabytes and I upload to minus.com. Uh, in this case, though. I know the Morgan Freeman GIF is very tiny. It's really short. It's only about two seconds long. So I'm going to try to get this under two megabytes. So right now I've got this one at 1.5 megabytes. And this is the almost 10, which means this is done before the GIFsicle compression. So we generally have better colors in the almost than we do with the duns. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. And it's not too bad. So we get some good quality there. If I zoom in, beautiful okay let's go back to 100 percent so that's 1.5 megabytes now if we wanted to look at say the 380k file still not actually too bad um, you can see this one's been rendered in 128 bit colors so when I start to zoom in here you can see on his face the uh, lack of colors it's not allowing it to look very pretty <laughs> so that is one of the reasons that you don't always want to use the 128 bit if you can avoid it the 256 will give you more colors so you can see even this one at a 3% compression ratio um, still looks much better you can see on his face he's not missing quite as few many colors and uh, it looks a lot better so this is the kind of caring process that you have to go through if you want to make a good quality GIF is to output a plenty of GIFs and go through and figure out which one it is at what size you'd like um, to give to people. Of course, the smaller, the better. Uh, people can load them quicker, a slower connection or telephone or anything like that. That's what we always want to shoot for. It's as small as we can. Now, if we want to get this right at the 2 megabyte mark, you can see it's only 1.5 megabytes right now. I can either go in and adjust um, my compressions, maybe I'll only want to do a 0.8% or a 1.3 if I want to go in between. I can do that, or I can actually go back to After Effects and re render a new uh, series of images and increase my size, maybe from 600 to say 650, so 50%. And so I can go ahead and re render those out into my frames folder, rerun my batch, and then check my new output and see if I can get this number a little bit closer to 2 megabytes that way it is bigger and we're still under the imager limit so it's all up to you on how well you want your compression to be um, the file size you want but with this process you kinda get a good selection of uh, file sizes and compression types and everything so with that you can then of course load up imager and I like the almost 10 so we can drop that in here start the upload and hopefully imager completes there we go and done and that's the, all there is to it so hopefully you learned something on how to make some well compressed gifs um, in the future i'm probably gonna do another video on how to make upvote downvote gifs using after effects because i'm sure that's something people would like to see as well but this is the basis for actually creating a decent gif um, and so hopefully if you have any questions, I can answer down below in the comments, and feel free to send me any messages. Thank you.